Hello everyone. Today we shall have a discussion about a famous story by Mulkaraj Anand, The Liar. This story is written by the famous author Mulkaraj Anand. He was a prominent Indian author in English. He was born on 12 December 1905 in Peshawar, India, and he passed away on 28 September 2004. His famous works can be identified as Untouchable in 1935. Kuli 1936 The Village 1939 The Sword and the Sickle in 1942 He was a recipient of Padma Bhushan award in 1968 Now let's know about the story The Liar In this story Lahu is a prominent character so in this story we find the writer demonstrates the art of storytelling through the fantastical stories woven by Lahu an old shikari and he told the young impressionable boy of the village he was considered as the most impressionable person in the village who is also the narrator of the short story here the narrator writes that lavu was a born liar and he was infamous as the best storyteller in the neighborhood lavu belonged to the untouchable sweeper caste but he was praised by everybody in the society because of his amazing storytelling technique the narrator's family did not object his proximity to lavu now as far as his physical appearance is concerned how he used to look like lavu was a thin little man very bright and agile with a glint of a lance and the glide of an arrow he was very energetic and could chase stacks up the steep boulders of the hill behind the village and he could run as fast as subedar deep singh's horse uh, subedar deep singh's horse he was in subedar deep singh's service he was working for subedar deep singh sometimes he acted as a shikari to subedar's guest he had a very sensitive dark and expressive face he was a big fan the narrator was a big fan of lavu and lavu taught the narrator that how to weave the story so whenever he used to be away from the house he used to tell any tom dick story to his father that where was he so he had he the narrator also learned the storytelling telling techniques from lavu the author was an ardent disciple of lavu now let's have a discussion that how he used to weave the story so once the author challenged lavu that it was impossible to track a prey when he was half up the side of a hillock lavu disproved him by tracking a ram up the hillock until he found it hiding in a cave so sometimes the narrator would provoke lavu saying that he did not believe the tale of a devil ram that lavu was supposed to he he was he was supposed to have seen while hunting uh, he was supposed to have seen while hunting the forest with the subedar deep singh so some sometimes the narrator never used to believe what lavu used to say lavu would swear that it was true and the subedar was also witness when both of them saw a terrible apparition of a beast lavu describes the beast he used to say that it was a beast about the size of an elephant with eyes as big as hens eggs and a beard as long as that of molvi shadin the priest of the mosque only not henna dyed in red but blue black it had huge ears as big as an elephant's which did not flap but pricked up like the ears of subedar deep singh it had a nose like that of the wife of missionary sahib and it had a square jaws which showed teeth almost as big as the chunks of the marble which lie outside the temple this is how he used to weave the characters in his story so lavu goes on to narrate the story to the narrator that he and subedar had sudden uh, had a sudden encounter with such a beast on the devi parvat at 12000 feet on the mountain when they were hunting they had thought that it was an urial means to say a very himalayan wild and horned sheep and started to chase it but the beast was frightened of them and disappeared into the mountain with a kick of its four feet he had stood there bravely while the subeda trembled with fear he says that he was fortunate to have seen such a beast devil 
the god of the tribe of, of rams he promised narrator that one day he would show him such a beast so what used to happen the narrator was fascinated by such uh, such kind of illusions but the author never used to believe sometimes the author never used to believe and both author and uh, the uh, and lavu they used to had uh, they used to have some conflict so lavu tried to convince the author that such thing existed by narrating another superfluous tale of huge snake that even he did not believe believe that story also the narrator accuses lavu for being a liar lavu gets angry and he says that he would never tell him any story in, in the future the the narrator stubbornly the narrator becomes very stubborn and he tells lavu that he would never speak to him again and in this manner both of them they part ways later lavu went for a hunting tour and did not come back for a long time the narrator regretted lavu's absence he eagerly overheard what the villagers and his father they used to say the negative remarks about lavu's character they accused lavu of stalking his prey by the forest pool and shooting it from a safe corner but they agreed that he was an he was an efficient tracker of animals the narrator's father accused lavu of being a vain boaster and liar and he also told that the only beast lavu could shoot that's a hair that that is also in its leg the narrator waited eagerly for lavu's return so that he could directly ask him uh, about the he could directly ask him that how these remarks were really true or false lavu returned to the village he limped about and seemed very ill the narrator was sad at his plight he seemed broken and dispirited the narrator pitied him and forgot all the scandals about him lavu was not the same talkative man who weaved fantastic stories earlier he became an introvert and lay very unconscious all day sometimes he limped about with a stick in his hand in the evenings he appeared angry and unfriendly so the narrator avoided going to him the villagers ignored him but the narrator could not restrain himself and he went to his hut and lavu was sleeping on a broken string bed under the shade of a peepal tree they reconciled and lavu told him that he was away for a hunting tour with subedar's eldest son kuldeep singh to nepal he went on he went on to narrate his fictitious stories his adventures his expect his expedition with kuldeep singh and he said that he had shot 12 tigers and 15 panthers and several stags in 7 days he relate in 7 days he related his fabulous encounter with a monster with the body of a wild bear and the head of a reindeer and the feet of a goat and the tail of a wild bull and the glistening fibrous tissue all around it like the white silken veil when he seen when he saw on the rani of bundi when she visited subedar deep singh's wife all the others were frightened of this apparition thinking it was a devil himself and thought of killing it but lavu felt that the monster was a real the monster was a royal princess of nepal who was under the spell of an evil magician and wanted to catch it alive and marry her lavu had resolved to transform her back to princess by reading magical incantations but the subedar's son had fired at it and frightened the creature and she had vanished into the thin air of the kalash parvat he had leaped from mountain to mountain to rescue her but the shots fired by the others had roused the magician who had cast a spell on her the angry magician had thrown a huge ball of snow at him to kill him but he was not frightened he blew a hot breath at the snowball when it disintegrated into million pieces and spread about in the sky like glittering stars the magician had then stamped the earth with its feet to open up a grave to bury him but lavu had leaped across it and found himself on a peak in the land of the immortal lamb at last he found that the magician had hidden the beautiful princess in a cave but he had given up the mission to save her 
fearing the death at the hands of the magician he had returned home by leaving across he had returned home by leaping across the himalayas the narrator completed labu's fabulous tale by saying oh you landed this side of the mountains you sprained your few your foot labu knew labu knew he had he had been found out by uh, but uh, he had been found out but being a master storyteller he did not accept the defeat he laughed at the narrator's ingenuity saying have i told you this story before then so hence we can say that labu had a vivid imagination imagination and willingness to share his imagination with others his efforts his efforts are praiseworthy as all, as his only intention was to entertain and enchant those who listened to him he was actually not a liar but a gifted storyteller who captivated his listeners with his fantastic stories so dear friend this is how we can say labu was a great storyteller thank you so much for watching this video and learning the story of labu by mulk raj anand for more videos i request all of you to subscribe my channel and comment thank you so much once again